one of my favorite off-season episodes every single year is the Coaching Changes episode. Coaching is everything in the National Football League, and there are 16 new offensive coordinators. We're going to tell you which teams made great decisions, which teams are really, really stupid, and have a lot of information for you. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday, February 28th. It's a big day. The last day of February. <laughs> That's true. It's a big day. Yeah. Is it a leap year next year? Is, is are we on? No one knows. No one tracks that. No one. No one pays attention. Someone just tells you when it's February twenty I mean, ninth. What's it? Every four. So uh, this yeah. sounds about right. It should be yeah. next year. Twenty twenty four. Oh mm. yes. Nice. Exciting. <laughs> one extra day. Uh, welcome in, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers. The deucers are. Well, they're deucing. They're start, they're all here today. I gotta start planning my party, my leap year party. <laughs> you guys want to go? Oh yeah, for sure. When is it? <laughs> next year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, all deucers will no, be there. No, they're not there. No? No, no. Brooks cool in the people house. only. The Borgogan is here. We don't participate in leap years, so. Oh! <laughs> that's a, it's a hard stance from Brooks. Brooks finally has it's, a real hardcore stance here. It's rough because, I, I mean, you have to commit, and then you're just a day off compared to everybody else. And you're like, it's March oh. 1st. You're like, no, it's it's February 29th. You're no, saying uh. he doesn't. Yeah actually even accept he, it as a he, day he does not recognize it brooks, so he's a day off the entire yeah, year it's actually march 8th in brooks world wow from all oh, the, from all the history from all the leap years that he has skipped. that was some quick <laughs> uh, that's close a, that enough was math a total guess <laughs> yeah um welcome in <laughs> welcome into the show happy to have you here nfl news to talk about we're going through the coaching changes we do this every year um i to be honest with you it, it is important information. So if it sounds like hearing a bunch of coaching changes is not that exciting, it's pretty informative on how you can expect teams to progress. And to me, it's even more informative when you look at the history of coaching changes from the year prior and the outcomes, because we are a rose colored glasses type of community, fantasy football players. And it's easy to take every coaching change that happens because we do it every year and just look at how it can help. Right. But when you reflect. Sometimes it's Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah. Yeah, mm. we had two two mm. of them fired this year, first-timers, uh, from last year's show. And uh, some insights that we want to share with you. So we'll do that momentarily. We do have kind of a big deal announcement. That's why I said it's a big day. This is really what I was talking about. I mean, about. it's so big that Mike will do the trumpet live. <laughs> That was a good one. Got a little raspy. That was, that was good. Um, the 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit, uh, this is your last opportunity to be entered to win a Listener League spot. You have to order it by March 1st, and you'll have a chance to win a Listener League spot. You'll get it at the lowest possible price. You'll get $15 in gift cards. You'll get a free copy of our book, a digital copy of our book, and the UDK... It's ready to go. You can get in there and start doing your research. The rookie fever, it's beginning right here, right now. We've got the combine just days away. Yeah, yeah. With, with the combine coming, we're going to end up having uh, another release of the UDK+. Plus. More information is going to be coming, but obviously right now all the rookie information is there. The, the, the Ultimate Draft Kit, it's a great resource for playing fantasy, it's good poop time. It's uh, just Whoa. a. I'm just saying when you're on that toilet. Wait, you okay. mean like you'd be on the phone? I'm saying you will you will enjoy your healthy movements more with the ultimate draft kit. That's there'll I be mean, some movement in your rankings as well. That's right. That's right. Adjustment to uh, becoming a winner. Things far more solid, guaranteed. Yeah, solid uh, <laughs> advice. Solid advice. Yeah. 
uh, as the Borgogan just typed, uh, bring the desktop in the bathroom with you. Uh, you don't have to anymore. Oh, that wasn't a sales pitch thing? You can if you want to. You're just saying you can literally bring your desktop in there. It works on the desktop, too. You got, oh, your, you I got, got your desktop you. in the bathroom there, Kyle. I don't, but I could. Well, well, I've, you- I've installed a toilet at my computer on <laughs> yeah, desktop. Yeah, that's where I was. That's just what I sit on on my normal going experience. <laughs> that would help you. Yeah. We lose a Most lot of- Most of the time, of, I got my man, shorts we on when I'm working. We lose a lot of Jason man. in the afternoons, yeah. if I'm honest. There's a certain time period- He loves the, the UDK. <laughs> So how do they uh, how do they find the ultimate draft kit? <laughs> they go to ultimatedraftkit.com. Oh wow. It's cool. very very easy. Check it out. Again, this is you you've got a day left you procrastinators. Get in there now, ultimatedraftkit.com and you will be automatically entered into a chance to play with us in the listener league for this upcoming season. And Bruxy, when will we announce the winner? We'll do that next Tuesday. Okay. All right. Just wanted to get a lay of the land. Quick question. We're hopping into the wishing well. So peaceful. The wishing well. Yes. Um, here we go. What do you want to happen in free agency during this off season? Uh, we will be doing a full free agency preview predictions next week, but this is the wishing well. This is, um, it's time to be selfish. It's time to be selfish. Yeah. What do you want to see happen this off season? That'll get you. Pe- people aren't stopping by the fountain at the mall, flinging a quarter and going, World peace. No. Wait, we're up to a quarter now at these. Oh rows? yeah! Wow, yeah. inflations. What do you? Hold on. What coin are you? Are I you thought flipping? that was just the time that I thought that was the last use for pennies. No, you throw a penny a into fountain. a fountain. The the fountain throws those back. So pennies into garbage cans. <laughs> yes, quarters into fountains. This is why it. your your dreams aren't coming true, Jay. It's because you're a he's cheapskate th- with the wishing well. He's throwing in like twenty five different pennies, what hoping th- that he gets twenty five no. things answered, and and you need a quarter. Then the well has to roll them all up, take them to the <laughs> bank, and exchange. Give it the quarter, man. It's ridiculous. So what is well, your I'll, wishing well I will, item? I will hop in here selfishly and say that. My hope is that the Cincinnati Bengals, who are going to you know, be coming up against some cap issues, I want them to relieve their cap issues just a little bit. I would like to see them release Joe Mixon. Okay. It's been rumored. And sign no other running back <laughs> whatsoever. Just ride dirty into the ride draft. Ride dirty into the draft. <laughs> because, I don't know, I think that would be my favorite landing spot for one Bijan Robinson. That would be my dream come true from the wishing well. I'll put 50 cents in there on that. Um, two two, two quarters. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. The, um, the mix-in being cut could definitely happen. I think P. Ryan's also not under contract. Correct. So they could, as you said, mm. as Jason Moore said, Ride dirty heading into the draft. <laughs> now they they have pick twenty eight, so that's I, what that, I was going to ask. I you. doubt that he makes it that far, he but mu- you, he I mean, might. This is a time for dreaming. Okay, Mike, what are you uh, thinking up in that brain of yours when you so, toss the quarter into the wishing well? So it is, it is selfish season. I have had Alexander Madison on my dynasty squad since day one. It's come in handy a few times, like whenever you know Dalva Cook is out, Alexander Madison. Not every time, but the most of the time, Madison. When when Dalva Cook has missed time, Madison's been great for fantasy football. I I you're think a, he is. You're a believer. I think he is good. I'm not saying that he's an elite player, but I think that he is a good running back. And should he end up on the Denver Broncos, who and we had another news blurb again today, just confirming that Javante Williams, it was a really bad injury and he's probably going to miss time and Sean Payton does magical things with fantasy running backs so Alexander Madison I would love to see him become a Denver Bronco okay I think the opportunity will be there it will be a tough decision on where you would draft a Madison if you knew Javante was on his way sure back. Well, I don't have to because he's on my dino team right I, I, I do true. think as far as offseason uh, transactions go this is very realistic to to happen and I think it's a great landing spot for all parties involved like the you know, they don't have a first round pick the Denver Broncos don't so they're going to need to add a running back to this team and they'll probably do it in free agency all right my uh wish list includes Aaron Rodgers or Derek Carr to the Jets I yes. think they are a very good football team they're a quarterback away and uh the reason why well Garrett Wilson is Ooh. the reason why. Also on my dynasty team, I would enjoy this very much. Uh, he is so good at football. I just want 
I want this simulation to get played out. I want Garrett Wilson to have the opportunity with a, a play caller and a quarterback that can, you know, put him into the best situation possible to succeed. It will mean huge things for fantasy. And that's why I have an or there. I don't, it doesn't have to be Aaron Rodgers to me. It just can't be Zach Wilson. And um, I, I think it, I don't think it can be Mike White either. It can't, I was going to say, are you okay if it ends up being Mike White? No, Mike White Mike White would be fine in the way that Ryan Fitzpatrick was fine, which was mostly fine, but sometimes you're freaked out of your mind. Sure. And maybe Derek Carr would be in that boat too. I don't know. He's, the one thing I'll say about Derek Carr is, did you see his contract request? I have not. He's looking at like $35 million a year. That's what he's wanting. That seems – that's low. That seems reasonable. That seems reasonable to me. So he is – I think – Daniel Jones was – the rumor was 45. 45. Okay. So I, I, I take that as Derek Carr actually wants to be in the best spot for him. So if it ends up being the Jets, I mean, maybe it's New Orleans, maybe it's someplace else. Um, but that seemed like a reasonable ask. It is. Probably because he's got plenty of other money. Yeah. When you look – you can only be so rich. That's what they say. Well, and I mean, he's got a long history of a losing record, so <laughs> probably doesn't help to ask for too much money. All right, we are yeah, got got cut obviously, just like Carson Wentz, but Ooh. we'll save that for the news. News and notes from around the league. Did you guys hear Carson Wentz got cut? What? Yes, and throwback if you've been following the show for quite some time. <laughs> Jason and I, a few years back, made a time capsule bet of who is out of the league first between Matt Ryan and Carson Wentz. And this thing <laughs> has – we have tri we have changed pole position – I mean, I don't even know how many 12 times. 12 times at least in the last three years where We're, it seems like my guy's going to yeah, win. It's a certain – it's it's Matt Ryan is done. Carson Wentz is good. No, well, Carson Wentz is no longer a starter. Matt Ryan just got traded. He will surely be the one. Nope. <laughs> Matt Ryan bitch. Carson Matt Ryan's Wentz. back on top, baby. <laughs> Who threw the last pass? Or does that even matter? Is it just the first one? Can you tie here? Like if they both I, never yes, took another both, snap? If they both this? never take uh, another snap, which I think is probable, <laughs> we will tie. possible. I, but I think Matt Ryan – Lasted longer than Carson Wentz, did he? Same season. I don't know. I Same I season. <laughs> An I injury. We're not getting granular with this bet. <laughs> All right. Here's another quarterback-related piece of news that Jason will enjoy, or we'll see. Uh, the Bucks will uh, allow Kyle Trask to compete <laughs> the, uh, for the starting job. Originally. There was an original report that talked about him being – <laughs> their default number one starter. That well, they were happy that Kyle right Trask now. was going to be the starter. That you know he's he's going to be great. And then uh, more recently, it said, "Well, we're going to bring in a veteran quarterback to compete with him." Honestly, they, they pretty much have to. Kyle Trask has not had the opportunity or shown that he can be a star. He wasn't drafted to be a star. Uh, he was a good quarterback at uh, you know for Florida. And I really liked his tape. I did. I'm excited for him to have the opportunity. I hope he wins this job. They, the Buccaneers do not have a ton of cap space. So as far as them going out, I'm sure they would love to go get Derek Carr, even Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know that they can afford them. So I think they're going to get kind of more a career backup type that comes in and competes. I hope Kyle Trask wins the job, and I hope uh, he's good because I, I believed he was. I've very much enjoyed just the statements of, Tampa Bay Buccaneers will allow a second round pick from three years ago to try and win the starting job. You took him in the second round. I was going to ask you, if he wasn't drafted to be a star, what was he drafted to be? He was drafted to be a potential starter in this league. I mean, that's what a and, second round yeah. draft pick for a quarterback is. If you're drafting a quarterback to be a star, they don't get to the second round. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's still pretty high draft capital. Yes. I do also, we do have an update. Uh, Carson Wentz threw a pass in what was it week seventeen, Kyle? Oh, and Matt oh. Ryan was in week fifteen. So I'm oh, real yeah. no, glad. No, 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 I'm no, glad no, we all agreed. No, it's the last <laughs> pass. We we all agreed yeah, on the get, record. Not getting granular. <laughs> I thought that was the case. I remember. Uh, I forgot he came back. Yeah, he did. Carson we Wentz all did. always <laughs> comes back, which he'll probably get a backup job, and Matt Ryan will probably be out sooner. So one can hope. All right, Javante Williams. The writing's been on the wall here. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about it quite a bit but new report 
uh, ESPN's Jeff uh, Legwold reporting that he could be sidelined well into the 2023 season. Yeah. Uh, ACL, LCL. What, uh, Jason, what's the last injury that he had? Uh, the the posterior lateral corner uh, Ooh, is part of impressive part yeah, of his injury. Good. The the uh, do I have a computer button? Yeah, I, was, don't. I was waiting for thank there you. it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, he, he got his knee jacked. That's the uh, medical. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> the, the, the medical term is his knee got completely jacked. And so he'll take a while to come back. This is reminiscent of what happened to J.K. Dobbins. We saw J.K. Dobbins saying, oh, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready week one. He wasn't ready week one. When he came back, he wasn't ready. You saw some flashes towards the end of the season, but it took we a saw, long time. We saw one particularly <laughs> strong leg that's right he had the superhuman leg and then the leg that was, was had, not able to I keep up one fast leg <laughs> he had a breakaway limp run <laughs> because he one really of his, did. he was literally dragging yeah. one of his legs behind he's so strong i mean was, it, re it really lived up to that title because he was never hurt again yeah like, no jk Dumas was never hurt he just looked like he was dragging a bonus leg or the, something. I, I believe the actual truth is that one of his legs, the leg that he had to have this massive recovery on, was much weaker yes. by necessity than his strong leg. And so <laughs> that's what happens. And, My strong leg. And so is it advisable to allow your other leg to become weaker to balance it? I don't think so. I think the reason J.K. Dobbins had success was because of his one fast leg. He needs a really okay. fast leg. I'd be really excited at this point in my life to have one fast leg. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Guess, I'd like a strong arm <laughs> and a fast leg. Um, joking aside, the, the Broncos have a situation at running back. Javante won't be – I mean, he's not going to be himself this year. I think that's a fair overarching yes, statement. I think so. Javante will not be the Javante we've seen in 2023. And we hope he will be in 2024. But they're going to have to make um, – they're going to have to make arrangements at running back, whether it's a committee, whether it's a Madison through free agency. Um, I think one single running back might end up on the roster. Uh, Chase Edmonds could get cut. So Tyler Beatty is there, and Ooh. there's a chance to get that nickname back out yeah, there. Yeah, and th this is why we talked about Alexander Madison. They, they they don't have a lot of extra draft capital. Now, this is a really deep running back draft, so maybe they grab someone in the fifth and sixth round that they feel confident in if a Zach Evans slides down to day three or something. Um, it, it, that's entirely possible. But when free agency opens up, I expect the Broncos to go after a running back. Keenan Allen not likely to be a cap casualty. That's at least the most recent report. We had uh, their general manager talk about good players making money, and I'd rather have a lot of good players than cap space. Kyle, how are you feeling? I'm loving it. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised that's not quoting Kyle on a letter he wrote to the team. But um, 31 years old, Keenan Allen, if he's back, he'll be valuable. And then multiple reports that Lamar Jackson is looking for a fully guaranteed contract like Deshaun Watson got. Thanks, Cleveland. They haven't even been close on an agreement. Uh, he did turn down, reportedly, a five-year deal worth $250 million, $133 guaranteed. $130 guaranteed versus uh, 230. The $230 that Watson got. That, it's hard to no say. No mathematician, but I that's know. a big difference. Yeah, it's hard when you see that. And, you know, there's been what? Uh, hasn't there been a report filed or a grievance filed that, teams may be colluding to not give guaranteed deals Ooh. with the NFLPA? Yeah, I mean, they obviously are. I don't know how you could prove that. You'd have to have actual, you know, a transcription of an email or something. But I believe this is the unspoken. All these teams do not want to enter the, the NFL world fully guaranteed contracts. So they're all kind of looking around, doing the eyeballs at each other like, Mm, right. No I won't yeah. do it if you don't do it. Uh, the NFLPA filed a grievance claiming the NFL and its teams have colluded against its players' pursuit of fully guaranteed deals. So that was in November. They and, filed that. In a for a reference, Kyler Murray was about 190 million guaranteed of his of the 230. Th this is when you have, um, and I think Baltimore fans would agree. Pittsburgh's been in this camp before. Like these teams that are disciplined with their their financial situation. It is a hard pill to swallow to throw that much money guaranteed at a quarterback when that's not how you've done it historically. 
And that's what I, I think you're running up against ball. Like there's a ton of teams that would have already had this deal done. Sure. Tons of them. You want to get, I mean, he's, he's worthy of the deal Kyler got. Yes. Yes. So, and, and there's probably 20, 25 teams that would have given him that, but he's running up against this Baltimore situation. And you know, everybody thinks you can get it done without it. You know, you can figure it out, but I think they're in for a rude awakening if they don't have Lamar Jackson. The, the, the biggest hope for football fans, for fantasy football fans, is that this doesn't come down to he's on the franchise tag and then we have a full game of chicken of does Lamar show up and play on that? Does he does he sit out for an entire season? Which I think is in the range of outcomes should Baltimore push completely in on that direction. Guess we know what we'll be talking about this yep. offseason. Uh, let's get into those coaching changes. Coaching Carousel. Ooh, I like my red hat. Yeah, that was, that was uh, for those watching. We were all coaches in that. I mean, do you have a preferred, like, would you be a head coach, Jason, a defensive coordinator, offensive? I would be a head coach. Yeah. For sure. You can motivate a room. Yeah, and I could delegate. I would uh, run it CEO style. Mm -hmm. Mike? Oh, you got to go head coach because then it's the, the D coordinator or the O coordinator, or o coordinator's <laughs> fault. For sure. You can fire them. Yeah. They, you suck. Yeah. You're out of here. That's smart. Half, yeah. the, half the league would, took that approach this year. I would definitely add a few assistant head coaches because that's a thing you can do too. Oh, then it's their fault. Yeah, then you're set. Um, All right. As I said, we're going to walk through the teams, the head coaching and offensive coordinator changes, things that will impact fantasy football. But I want to get a lay of the land here at the top, including reviewing the nine head coach changes from last year, um, which was a lot. I mean, that was 2022 had nine head coaching changes, 15 new offensive coordinators. This year we've got five new head coaches, 16. 16 that's half the league. new half, offensive coordinators half of the national football league has a new person running the offense next year so these are things you will want to be familiar with so last year we had two fired that would be nathaniel hackett and lovey smith they were new head coaches last year four of the nine made the playoffs that would be kevin o'connell in minnesota you had doug peterson with jacksonville you had brian dable and mike mcdaniel Right. And um, and then you had some less than successful debuts, three and 14 for Matt Eberflus. We knew that that was going to be. Oh, yeah. That was trust the process. And then uh, Josh McDaniels, just six and 11. That was a huge disappointment. Dennis Allen with the Saints. I mean, what? A, I don't know. Somehow that seven and 10 feels really disappointing. Yeah, it does, because it, it, they were like the most lukewarm team of the year. If we gave that award out, I feel like that's how I'd feel about New Orleans. You were never very high, never very low, good defense, okay, you don't win a lot. I felt lower on them than 7 and 10. Yeah. Yeah, I think they were a little cold to me. Okay. Uh and then you know, Kyle pulled out the defensive head coaching hires over the last 5 years just as an interesting thing to look at because obviously like Arizona, they hired a defensive head coach. Here's the kind of, uh, since 2018, the results. If you hire a defensive-minded head coach as your head coach, Mike Vrabel. I love him. He's great. So that one, I'm saying that right here at the top because it worked out. Not so much for Matt Patricia, Steve Wilkes, Vic Fangio, Brian Flores, Matt Jowrul, Joe Judge. Those are all fired. Uh, Ron Rivera still hasn't made the playoffs. Brandon Steely, one good year, one meh year. Robert Sala, defense was great last year. They did not make the playoffs. Eber Flus, we talked about it. Lovey Smith was fired. Dennis Allen will be fired. Will be fired at some point here soon. And then now this year, you have two more. You have D'Amico Ryan's coming over from uh, the 49ers and Jonathan Gannon for Arizona. I honestly do believe, like, long term, if you're like, you know, zooming out at the, looking at your team. This is it's the way to go. If you're in a rebuild, hire yourself a defensive-minded coach, build up that side of the ball, have it ready to go. You will fail, 
Because, I mean, most head coaches fail. From That's, a win-loss yeah, perspective? Yeah, you, you will fail because you offense is what wins. And then once the defense is set up and ready to go, then you bring in your offensive gurus and you can turn things around pretty rapidly. I think it's certainly easier to build up a defense with a bright mind at head coach than it is to you know win the quarterback lottery. Because you're asking an offensive-minded head coach to come in and if they don't have the right quarterback, which – Look, if you've been fired and you're hiring a new hire, you probably don't. Right. Don't have the right guy yet. So, a um, little chicken or egg situation going on there. But let's start with uh, Arizona after this quick break. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Is that Gannon? Yeah. Explosives. Sorry, I'm cringing over here. You may proceed with the Arizona Cardinals head coach. I'm just not sure that you want to root for anybody. I very I mean, much want to root for You rooted against Payton. Cliff Kingsbury forever. Yeah, wisely. And but what were you rooting for? Him to get fired, right? Uh, not in the beginning. I was no, rooting. No, no. I'm, I was saying, ro I'm saying over the last how many years have you been At least saying, two years. Cardinals get rid of this guy. Yes. Then they do it, yes. and you're right back on the negative train. Choo-choo, I... Jason, here he comes. <laughs> Look, I mean, I, I am hopeful that Jonathan Gannon they, is, is a good hire. The uh, people around the Eagles organization – pretty much universally love him. I know the fans are very upset with him. The fans don't universally love him, but he comes highly recommended. He's a young head coach, and he is building a team of young assistants, young offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, all people similar to how the Eagles built it, where you've got a group of similarly aged, similar families where they could be friends, you know, in and out of the facility. They can have camaraderie. All, all part of the same Call of Duty clan. Right, <laughs> exactly. And, and I, you know, I, I read about how the, you know, Gannon is trying to recreate that mold. So I don't mind the fact that he is going for it against public perception, bringing in a young Drew Petzing, uh, bringing in inexperienced, you know, we don't have anyone with experience as a head coach, or our DC with experience as a defensive coordinator, or our OC with experience as an offensive coordinator. It's a, it is very green, but I can appreciate going for it. I am full of pessimistic hope. Hmm. Does that make sense? Pessimistic hope. It sounds hope? like you're trying to, yeah, both sides of the fence. Got it. I'm hopeful. That's what we all do. I doubt it. With our home teams. Expect the worst, hope for the best. You could just hope. I can't do it. Is it because the Cardinals have done this to you? That and you watching, can just hope. watching Jan Jonathan Gannon's player interactions one-on-one -on -one making me cringe. The Cardinals were very undisciplined as a team. Cliff Kingsbury, always one of the most penalized teams in football. Certainly time for a yeah, change. Yeah, but they're cool. They were 4-13. and 13. They could bring in a big pass rusher. There, there's a lot of rumors that the Bears are, are getting closer and closer to just moving the number one pick, which will, in fact, make the first two quarterbacks. And... Arizona would have the their pick of the litter in terms of the defensive talent in the draft. So it'll be a while yet to find out whether or not this positively impacts Kyler Murray. But when you listen to at least Jonathan Gannon talk about this offense and what Drew Petzing is good at, it's being familiar with multiple styles of offense and being flexible and willing to tailor something to your players' gifts and abilities, not your player to your scheme. That's been a problem in Arizona for a while is you don't play players in the way that they're best suited to play. You play them in the way that you're best suited to coach. And that's one of the reasons they brought in Petsing from uh, the Browns is because he has familiarity with multiple systems. So it can't get much worse than 29th in yards per play. Mm -hmm. um, we are yet to know whether or not DeAndre Hopkins will be around still. I still lean. I don't know where you guys are at on that. I still lean he'll be gone. I do too, yeah. I think it's the right move for the Arizona Cardinals given where they're at as a franchise and where Hopkins is at as, in, in his career. They could use capital to rebuild on the fly. I do think you're right. Not every change at coach is good, is positive, but when you're changing from the bottom, you know, 29th in yards per play, it's got very little worse that it can get. A good way to put that, if, you're, if your pants are filled with poop, doesn't and really, we're back. Doesn't really matter what pair you put on as long as they're not. Yeah, put on a dirty pair of pants. Sure. 
Right. Hopefully they're just not as dirty. So looking at the the Cleveland Browns, the Jacoby Brissett, you know, he we had essentially weeks one through twelve with him. I I was pleasantly surprised by Jacoby. You you know that he is a backup level quarterback, but I thought that he his success was surprising to me. You know, the, if you take out you take his stats. See what he would have done over a 17-game pace. He was on pace for over 4,000 passing yards. He was completing 64% of his passes. His uh, his touchdown ratio to to interceptions was essentially two to one. And it's like Jacoby played very very well. I, the, when we when we think of the Cleveland Browns, I, I, when I think of the Cleveland Browns, my memory kind of wipes the moment that Voldemort, aka Deshaun Watson, came in. And you're like, wow, they stink. That guy is not good. And forgetting that, that while they weren't winning a ton of games, like they were getting their the defensive side of the football was pretty rough for Cleveland last year. Jacoby was 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 good enough, I think, that you give this Drew Feller a shot to come in and see if he can help mature Kyler Murray's game. The Panthers, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, Frank Reich. Welcome back to the league, Jeff. Saturday, not hired this off season, Mike. I don't know if you knew that. Is that? Uh, I am surprised. He's still available for Carolina if midseason things aren't going. There right. are many men who need to be led. Yes, uh, Frank Reich taking over for Ja Rule and Steve Wilkes. Thomas Brown taking over for Ben McAdoo. I'm so shocked that didn't work. Um, Carolina last year, 23rd in pace of play, 20th in points per game, 29th in yards, 29th in pass attempts, and yet really battled their way. Like you look at their season at seven and ten versus the. The Saints seven and ten season, sure. The Panthers traded McCaffrey away and some seemingly outworked their opponents. The offensive line, you know, they are a quarterback away. I think from really being able to take this division. Yeah, I mean Frank Reich. We, well, the division's we, bad. But. Yeah, we we talk about it, and it's very easy and obvious to to say this, but it's true. If your quarterback is bad, your coaches seem like they're not that great. If your quarterback is great, your coaches are better. The, the truth for Frank Reich is he's had a hodgepodge of veteran quarterbacks over and over and over, and he's been pretty good with them. It did not work out this last year with Matt Ryan, and I believe he got jobbed. We don't know the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. <clears throat> it seems like they're going to try to trade up, get someone great, sure. uh, someone hopefully great as a rookie. Carson Wentz was also another in the long line of Frank Reich after Andrew Luck stories. <laughs> I thought, yeah. you were, I thought you were saying they're going to maybe they'll look at bringing Carson oh, Wentz down to Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> that would be. Uh, I let bygones be bygones, Carson. Let's win some games. Yeah, that would not happen. But um, so th my point is, I believe he's a good coach for a new young quarterback. He was great with Andrew Luck, and if they go and draft a new quarterback, this looks to me like a better situation for a quarterback to develop in than just your average situation. I know that there'll be a time and place to, to to talk through all the rookies, but do you guys have strong convictions one way or the other about Anthony Richardson? Because I am... I do. I am starting to uh, get pretty excited for Richardson if he's in the right situation. I did not know which way you were going to lean there. No, I didn't know you either. You look like you were about <laughs> to jump in, no, I, and I, I had no idea which I way. Am, I'm very... I think he's going to be a, a player. I do too. I you know there's there's a certain level of physical dominance that you have to cross like Malik Willis was a bad passing quarterback and was a exciting mobile prospect. Malik Willis does not have the athleticism that Anthony Richardson has. Or that, the arm. <clears throat> right, the strength, the physical tools. Anthony Richardson is a bona fide superhuman. I and, think he's going to be a top 10 pick. He very well, very well could. Certainly in the top this 15. This is a rookie quarterback yep. out, of Florida, out of Florida, which if he is drafted, I think in the top 15, he'll be the first Florida quarterback drafted that high in 52 years. The, right. I mean, Trask should have been, but I get it. Yeah, it's, no, Trask should have been 101. It's very scary when uh, like his production profile is basically one year, like, you know, one year as a uh, of of full full a full season production. And then when you Start throwing out the Josh Allen comps of like, don't don't do that. Like, there's there, Josh Allen is such a fringe 
success story of of incredibly raw, like just physically talented, just terrible, a terrible quarterback for two seasons, and then morphs and is surrounded by I the think, right people to turn into no, a, a superstar player. Like that's that's not what happens. I think Lamar is the better comparison when you when you looked at Lamar as a as a passing talent. You worried about accuracy like you did with Richardson, but you saw the big arm and you saw the ability to get it downfield in select situations. And then you have this dynamic runner and this dynamic playmaker. And that's what, like, think about where did Lamar go in the draft? 20? He was 32. the last. I thought he was the last pick. So, last pick. so I mean, there were, there were doubts, obviously, around Lamar Jackson. Sure, but, but Lamar still had, I mean, multi Lamar was a much multiple better. years of 3,500 passing yards yeah Lamar was a much better college prospect for for sure his yeah. you know he was a Heisman candidate did he you're win saying because he had a longer production oh, I'm, profile I'm, I'm saying like he had two years where he he had all of his rushing yards where it was I think he like outrushed Saquon Barkley uh in the college season and threw for 3,500 passing yards twice where Anthony Richardson this past year was just over 2,500 right no that's fair uh, and yet Richardson is going to go higher in the draft. He's, he's a very than interesting Lamar, player. Yes. Than Lamar did. Um, I bring it up because Carolina's at nine. So that could be one of the quarterbacks that, um, you know, they, they probably need to keep their draft capital, and he could be a target at mm -hmm. nine. Denver, new head coach, we know it. Sean Payton, new offensive coordinator. Really a new whole coaching staff, top to bottom. But Joe Lombardi taking over on offense, but not really, mm -hmm. right? I mean, he's a... Uh, Sean Payton will will be running that offense. Yeah, I was not a fan of Lombardi as an OC, but I think this is a good situation for him because he's he's not in control of this offense. Sean Payton will be in control of this offense, and Lombardi has enough skills to be the guy that is the assistant to Sean Payton. So I don't to call in the, to have get the pe the the call from Payton and then send it in for right. the huddle. Yeah, he's um, got it covered. He'll be like a research assistant. Uh, th this is really exciting. Sean Payton has always had good offenses, and you say, well, is that because he always had Drew Brees? Maybe. But it's what a we. Big question. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge question. But I do believe that Sean Payton is a very, very, very good head coach. I, you think he can increase their 32nd ranked points per game? <laughs> I think it will. They will not be any worse than that. Or 28th in rushing touchdowns? Yeah, and, well, and that's the real big factor is I believe he's going to come in here and fix the running game. That's why we've talked about the running backs here. He's he mentioned that in his coaching search. He wants to get the running game going, and the Saints running backs as a core, sometimes there was a star like Kamara, and sometimes there was a committee, but as a team, they always were exceptional when it came to total rushing yards, yes. total involvement in the passing game. Running back fantasy points from his time in New Orleans. Three, five, one, two, thirteen. Oh, one, man, terrible. One, four, two, 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 one, two. Almost always a top five in fantasy points to the running back position as a team. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, nowhere to go but up in Denver, that's for sure. But he has put together a staff. He is there for the long term, and he will – his presence will – by nature, tempt folks to buy into various mm -hmm. pieces of the Broncos' offense, likely to be maybe slightly disappointed instead of ultimately crushed like last yeah, year. Yeah, you're, you're going to have a lot of people in your leagues that are absolutely in on Russell Wilson as a sneaky value, as Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. They're going to be 100% back in again. And you've got to decide whether you believe I, – I believe Sean Payton is good. Whether you believe that he can fix the whatever ailments that Russell Wilson had – I will be on the side that I don't I don't think he's going to fix Russell Wilson. I won't be in on drafting these pieces. I do view him as a good long-term fix. I mean, if Russell Wilson was my quarterback and I'm like, how can I make this offense better? Focus on the running game. No question. Put him in a good position. Houston, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, D'Amico Ryans takes over. He was kind of, um, I think, the cream of the crop of this offseason head coaching search. Um you know, they, there were offers from Denver that were reportedly turned down for D'Amico Ryans, and he lands with the team he was a pro bowler with. And um, Bobby Slowick takes over at offensive coordinator. 
the Texans are a a rebuilt. I mean, they're, they were mm-hmm. three thirteen and one. They have the most caps, or not the most cap space, six most, but thirty seven million dollars. They got the number two pick. You know, he, he's in a pretty good position to give this team a new identity from from the first snap of his first season because it's very likely they'll have a brand new quarterback. That's the face of the franchise. They'll have moved past the Voldemort years. And we will have uh, kind of something to look forward to. I think the Houston fans should be excited. I think you got a really good head coach. You know, you've got cap space and draft capital, and I think you're going to have, you know, whether it's C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, you're going to have a new quarterback at the helm. My my biggest question, really, for the Houston Texans uh, with with the new guys coming in, it's what do they think about workload for a running back? Like that, because it's Damian Pierce here for the Houston Texans, and then. You, it's hard. It's gonna be really difficult to get excited about anybody, even if, if if Brandon Cook somehow is still on this team. But you have a rookie quarterback. Well, we know historically rookie quarterbacks don't support wide receiver ones. Yes, it, Brandon Cooks is very good, but it will just be a couple spike games here and there. There won't be anything truly consistent for any of the wide receivers of the Houston Texans. So it's do they want to feature Damian Pierce in a three down role? Do they want him to get more involved in the receiving game? And those, uh, we just, we don't have answers for those questions yet. It's fair. Jason, anything to add on Houston? Not really. We don't know much about uh, their offensive coordinator. He was the passing games coordinator for the uh, 49ers. That was after being kind of an offensive assistant. And he, that was just for a couple of years. He actually moved from a, the defensive side of the ball it's TBD, and I don't think he's going to be able to do much with the offensive pieces there. So I'm guessing you'll have Dem- – D'Amico Ryans is a hometown favorite. I've heard people talk about this is the second best thing the Texans have ever done, people around the organization. So I would imagine two or three years from now, after a little bit of failure because of the personnel, Bobby Sloak will be replaced, and they'll bring someone else in for offensive coordinator. Uh, D'Amico Ryans will still be there. The Colts, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, Shane Steichen coming over from Philly. Great hire. And Jim Bob Cooter. Oh, he's, JBC. he's back, baby. You guys are big Jim Bob Cooter fans. His just, name I'm is just... Jim Bob Cooter. Of course we're fans. Jim Bob is not as popular as it once was, I don't think. Jim Bob is a terrible name. Jim Bob Cooter. Oh, I mean, baby, I'm in. I mean, you have, you got that angle. You got the junior bacon cheeseburger angle. Like oh, JBC. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's just. The what league. about the actual on the field stuff? I don't really care. I just like to talk about Jim. Jim, Jim Bob, Bob Cooter. Cooter. <laughs> yeah. I guess that that was true of Guns Mahoney back in the day too. Yeah. Uh, Shane Steichen's a great hire. This is the thirtieth yes. in points per game. There's a theme here. Houston, thirtieth in points per game. Denver, thirty second in points per game. Um, Steichen's an offensive mind. So when you look at the history of the defensive hires. Uh, they're going to have to figure out what's happening at the quarterback position, but uh, oh, goodness, of all the teams, they have to figure it out. Eight different starting quarterbacks over the last five years. It is like a curse of Andrew Luck. It's like from that moment, I mean, it, you can look at it on the bright side. Colts fans have got to see different quarterbacks sure. multiple per year. A lot of experiences. And what's amazing is that Jacoby Brissett would have been better than all of them. He, just yeah. to keep him as your quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is like the Colts. Hopefully, Baltimore is looking and just reviewing some history of what has happened to the Colts when you had a franchise quarterback. They uh, they didn't lose. You mean that you like, drafted? Yeah, well, yeah. But I'm like saying Peyton like Peyton and I'm saying Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. He left, so it's it's a different situation of arguing over money. But when you lose a franchise quarterback, things can go from bad to even worse, to just a full-on dumpster fire where you have no idea when your team is going to be back on the up and up. They are the – they're my leader in the clubhouse to take the number one pick away from Chicago. Ooh, they, I mean, they would have to pay up. And I think it's possible that Chicago could flip-flop with Houston and then trade down again That's as okay. well. If Chicago pulls a that double, off – The double-double. If they, if they double mm-hmm. dip, move to two and then to four, I mean – that's just get that GM an award. Yeah, he'll need like a huge duffel bag to hold all the picks that they get from those two trades. Yeah. But Jim Bob Cooter, passing game coordinator last year in Jacksonville, did a great job. Uh, Eagles consultant in 21, and then Jets running back coach in 2019. I mean, it's, it's Chuck Steichen's team. Yeah. Yeah. You, the, Steichen is the Jim Bob Cooter is a great name. I don't think he's a great coach. 
he his running game history has not been great, which is I don't know how he got the Jets job uh, as the running backs coach after they probably just said you can't run in in Detroit. Yeah, I mean, sure. No, the, any, nobody could, do, they, that. Nobody could, could do that. Job. I think they were 32nd, 30th, and high 20s. But then he goes to the Jets, and they were 31st and uh, 23rd in, in yards uh, gained. Obviously, they, there's a very important running back here for the, for the Colts. You want Jonathan Taylor to be great, so hopefully Shane Steichen really is the man in charge. But he was the one of the Eagles coaches that us as Arizona Cardinals fans think we would have preferred. He's really entering a contract. Yeah, year. Jay Taylor, Jonathan yeah. Taylor. Yeah, it's year four. Year. It's year four. What for a difference him. a year makes on how it, the, the number one overall dynasty pick feels. It's it's contract year for Michael Pittman. I mean, yeah. they're going to have to make some big decisions. I, I've been getting Jonathan Taylor at the back, the very back of first rounds in some of these early best ball leagues. That's Just wild. 10, 11, 12 sometimes. Well, I think there's a lot of question marks. You don't have any stability here. It's brand new. What is, like, and Shane Steichen might sound like a great hire, but you know what? I bet if he has a quarterback, he will be, and if he doesn't have a quarterback, he won't be. Sure, and, and look at how the running backs are used up in Philadelphia. Like, I know they didn't have a Jonathan Taylor there, but some coaches just have a philosophy of, I'm going to use a bunch of different running backs in a bunch of different scenarios, and uh, what, if, what if Jonathan Taylor's not a three-down running back for this team? Goodness. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> People out there have them on their teams. You're I'm, risking their very mental health. They right? they need to be aware of the risks. He'll be a three down back. He yeah, should he be. Will, he will be. Um. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna read through the offensive coordinator changes, and then I want you guys to hand pick. You, you can stop at the first one. I want you to hand pick. What do you mean stop at the first one? Mike wants to talk about the Baltimore Ravens' yes. new OC. Yeah, you, we, we will. Okay. I was just going to read through them all, and then that could be the one you pick out you want to okay. talk about. Okay. Because we're not going to get through all of them in the same detail that you're going to get us into here okay. with Baltimore. Okay, go ahead. Ted Monken replacing Greg Roman. Todd. What did I say? Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I went through it a little too quick. It definitely. All right. And now we can stop. <laughs> okay, so fine. Can, do you want to like, do you want to talk about them yeah, now? Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm excited. You need to talk about because, Todd. Because yeah. Or as I call him, I call him Ted for short. Yeah. You know, T Monk. And he's going to run things for the Baltimore Ravens. They're, they are going from the the oldest of old school with, with Greg uh, Roman, where Greg Roman, where it is established, 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 to an air raid offense coordinator. Now, uh oh, I like I, what what actually happens like w when Harbaugh is the one who is in control of the team, but they knew who they were hiring. Like th they're hiring the guy who was in Tampa when we had the years of. Ryan Fitzpatrick and Jameis Winston just slinging the ball all over the field and to a ton of success and some failure on Jameis Winston's part. But looking at, you know, the three years in Tampa Bay, 16th in attempts, third, fourth. If Lamar Jackson, if they can actually patch things up and Lamar Jackson is back and you have this team go from where they were in passing attempts up into – just, you know, a top 12-ish, a, a, a top 15. It's just a, a top of a top half passing attack. That would be so exciting for what Lamar Jackson would be for fantasy football. The scary part is the interception totals in his four NFL years. Yeah. 27, 20, 32, and 30. So the offense has not been – like, I look at that offense and I say, well, we don't have anybody to catch the football. Right, we don't have the quarterback under contract. Well, you and Bate, then now Bateman you have be back. right. We but but he's he's still a little he's, TBD on yes his, unproven on his uh, future. I I just also I'd like to credit Jameis Winston with a lot of those interceptions. I would too. The ones from Cleveland. Well, the the ones no. from Cleveland that was the Freddie Kitchens year, and that was when he we, didn't throw the interceptions. The offense is. I mean, we know this from the Bruce Arians offense in the past as well. Like. The offensive system, if you tell a quarterback that isn't great at throwing the ball in the seam to throw it there a ton, then you do get more interceptions. Yes. So but, you're enthusiastic. I am. I'm, okay. I'm, ex I'm excited to see what, what this team – because I agree that like their wide receiver room doesn't look great with Rashad Bateman as the de facto one. We're still not 100% sure he can be a true number one in the NFL because we he hasn't had enough time to show us on the field. He looked – okay in the time that we the few games that we had to start this year 
they're going to add someone else. It's what level. And then if you just you really turn things into a more pass oriented with which that opens things up for Lamar Jackson to run even more because now he's uh, now he's dropping back, which turns into more scrambles. Just say I, I, I'm I'm excited for the opportunity. Should they get everything figured out with the contract? I'm more nervous, Jason. Where do you lay? Are you excited that they're making the change? Yeah, I, I do think that the Ravens' offense was getting stale. They talked about that around yes. Baltimore, talking about how defenders kind of figured them out. They knew what their plays were going to be. Uh, it, it definitely seemed like a time for a change. Obviously, we need Lamar Jackson there for it to be relevant, assuming that he is playing football this year. I, I am excited to see what they can do because, like you said, not every quarterback can play in every system and throw the right seam ball. I think Lamar Jackson can. I think he's a great. He's, he's obviously good. an NFL MVP already. If he comes back and plays, I believe he has a better offensive system here this year than than last year. Dallas, Kansas City, Los Angeles, both of the teams: the Patriots, the Jets, the Eagles, the Buccaneers, the Titans, the Commanders. All oh, new gracious. offensive coordinators. The Dallas is a big one. They replaced Kellen Moore with Brian Schottenheimer, which is run, run, run some more historically. Yeah, I mean, th I I believe this is going to be a they replace Kellen Moore with Mike McCarthy. Yeah, you know that he wants to run this offense a little bit more. But you're right, Schottenheimer is you know historically wanted to run the ball a lot. I'm actually more excited. That, there's two teams that I want to talk about from this list, and one is the absence of Kellen Moore and the addition for him for the Chargers. The Chargers getting Kellen Moore. The Dallas Cowboys offense has been. I think really clever. Yes. It's well run. It's somewhat simple, and yet they disguise things. They run motion. They they do a lot of great stuff to get guys open and in mismatches, and they've been a very prolific offense for the last several years under Kellen Moore. I am not a fan of what Lombardi has done over the last several years with the Chargers, with Justin Herbert, especially this last year. It was just the grossest-looking offense. Maybe that's Herbert. Maybe he's just all of a sudden afraid to throw the ball down the field, but I think the offensive system sucked. And I believe that the new offensive system with Kellen Moore and Herbert and hopefully Keenan Allen stays under contract. Mike Williams, I'm very, very excited for the offense uh, for the Chargers with Kellen Moore as the OC. And what's the second team? The well, second hold team. On, hold on before you move. Kyle, is, <laughs> this is a Kyle special. Is this, this, you, you're 100% sure in this stat? I'm 100% sure. Games with 400-plus passing yards oh, and yeah. three-plus passing touchdowns in their career. Kellen Moore, one. Justin Herbert, zero. Yeah, I mean, he's going to go in and dunk on that fool with and that stat. So it was what well, we got week 17 against Washington in 2015, 435 and three for Kellen Moore. Justin Herbert. I remember you, that game. You're Herbert. You got to you better figure it out. The other team I wanted to talk about is the New York Jets. They had what I viewed as a very good good offense given bad quarterback play I don't think the system was the problem for the Jets 29th in points per game yeah no oh, I mean they had horrific place of play horrific quarterback play and maybe I'm wrong maybe it was all the system and Zach Wilson seventh in pass attempts should have been you know, great opportunity but they got Nathaniel Hackett who just got fired in his one year go and uh, there's you know I don't I don't know if there's validity to the fact that you know this is another chance to try and get Aaron Rodgers Nathaniel Hackett was the OC with Rodgers during his two MVP years and you know this is what the Broncos kind of did when they hired him hopefully they can get Rodgers and so now they're you know the New York Jets are bringing in Nathaniel Hackett saying this time it'll work that scares me because I don't know that he's great I think he just had two good years with Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is great and sure if the Jets are able to acquire Aaron Rodgers, which I think would be awesome for all parties involved, I hope that happens, then I'll like this higher. If not, I worry. I think this is a downgrade to their offense. I don't understand why they let their offensive coordinator go personally, and I believe that Nathaniel Hackett is not a great offensive mind. It's been a mixed bag. His opportunities at offensive coordinator historically, Buffalo, Jacksonville, Green Bay, um, just one time with a passing offense that was top 10 in attempts in that time. So, you know, I think we expect the identity to be defense and running the football regardless. Brees Hall. With Brees Hall. Um, but, yeah, it's a little bit 
you know, I obviously they made the determination the head coach was not the ideal position for Nathaniel Hackett, but his history since 2013 was enough for them to come in and bring him bring him on board. There's a lot of TBD there in that offense. We don't know if it's going to be a Rodgers or a Carr or a Garoppolo or Mike White. So, Mike, do you have a, one of those teams? I mean, do we want to talk about uh, the Chiefs? Number two. Are you talking about uh, the budget magician is back? Matt Nagy is back. He gets to stand next to the real magician, Andy Reid. Yeah, so Eric Bieniemy moved on to Washington to hopefully prove his merit so he can be considered for a head coaching gig. I'm fine with this because it's it's still Andy Reid running the show. The larger like overall question for the Kansas City Chiefs is there I don't know if you guys saw there was a a blurb kind of just tossed into the ether of they might be grooming Matt Nagy to take over for Andy Reid who would be out in a couple years or so. Reid is like 65 I think. I don't know. We can, we can look old. that up, but that when that move happens, now I will have some concern for what is happening with the Kansas City Chiefs. Until then, it, it's like Shane Steichen. Like I trust in Shane Steichen's offense. I trust in Andy Reid's offense, and Matt Nagy has worked well with him before. Yeah, I mean, you. So you I don't have any problem. You have history of Nagy as the offensive coordinator right. for Andy Reid succeeding. He was. Uh, fifth in offensive yards, sixth in points scored, top ten in rushing offense, and this was with Alex Smith and one game right. of, of Mahomes. So I'm not worried about any. Uh, honestly, if they fired Matt Nagy, if they hired Matt Nagy, if they hired you, Mike, I'd be like, Andy Reid, Mahomes, yeah, Mike's gonna crush it. It's kind of interesting that the Cowboys, Chiefs, Chargers, and Eagles all have new offensive coordinators, and all four of those offenses were the best in football, right? Like the Cowboys were fourth in points per game. Chiefs were number one. You know, the Chargers, they were 13, but they were fifth in pace of play, second in pass attempts, third in yards. Um, you know, they needed a change, I guess. But then Philly, they're losing Shane Steichen. Yeah. Not by choice. Brian Johnson taking over. But they also were a, a well-oiled machine. And you expect that, you know, these head coaches can support these transitions, but it doesn't, Always work out that way? No, it doesn't always work out. Something will, to be aware of. Will Bill O'Brien work out as uh, coming oh back home to the Patriots? I think it's way better. Than, Absolutely. Way, way better than what they've been dealing with. Completely I mean, agree. If it wasn't Bill Belichick that had put together the Joe Judge, Pat, Matt Patricia offensive coordinator duo, it would have been a topic of comedy for the just every single moment. Like He gets all this credit. Because of what he's accomplished. But that was just tomfoolery. Mm -hmm. Defensive mind, Matt Patricia running the offense because he likes him. <laughs> yeah, no, Bill O'Brien, he's had success in this role for this team. Obviously, Tom Brady is a big part of that. But he is at least an offensive mind. I like that he went to college and uh is that the end of the got sentence? a degree yeah got a degree finally yeah finally no, bill but I like now your parents are proud he went to bama and you know as the oc the last lived couple on years. campus <laughs> <laughs> and you know i, I want to see what he brings to the nfl we mocked bill o'brien the general manager because he was Rightfully terrible so <laughs> he was terrible but i think he was actually he's he's run some good offenses yes he has i think he's a good coach and I like this hire a lot for Mac Jones or whoever the quarterback is going for. All right. That is going to wrap up today's coaching changes episode. Unless any other breaking news, any new hires Brooks in the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes? No, sir. Okay. Well, that'll do it. One final reminder, Jason. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this. Cause I, I like, you like to wait to the last minute. Yeah. I, I'm a procrastinator. The UDK is available right now. Ultimate draftkit.com. Your last chance to get in there and get all of the uh, pre-order bonuses, including a chance to play in the Listener League with us, which we will announce very soon. So go to ultimatedraftkit.com, equip yourself. You're going to do it anyway. Get get in there. Get <laughs> the – oh, boy. Well, I forgot about this, Jim. Let it sink in, baby. <laughs> I did forget. 
uh, a blast from the past. If that hasn't dissuaded you, ultimatedraftkit.com. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk soon. Another episode coming on Thursday. We will see you then, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.